what if there's people listening who are, you know, after this podcast have decided, you know what, I'm going to make a step um, to make a change, but they're not at the level that, that, that we're discussing. They're not at the level where you're talking about brothers who have made a change and then they've relapsed. What about people who are at the beginning of that journey? What do you advise those people? What do you mean, as in uh, the beginning of that journey, in that they've never, they've never, it's never been something that they've even broken away from, or maybe it's not even been something that they've deemed like a serious thing that there's a problem. And now they're listening to the podcast and they're going, "Well, I have that problem. I didn't realize it was a problem. Do you know, I didn't realize I was addicted." So at the very beginning of that journey, it reminds me of a story of one of our coaches uh, mentioned on Facebook. He said, "So there was this young man, uh, I believe he was Muslim. He had a problem, right? He knew, you know, pornography is coming in the way of his life, right? Um, pornography addiction. So he went." to some counseling sessions and uh, there he met people. He met people who have been to prison because of sexual assault, right? He met people who have been divorced because of sex addiction. And he thought to himself, you know, I'm not that bad. These guys are way up there, right, you know? And he saw uh, recovery, right? He, he saw the fruits of recovery. He was sober for about six months and he left recovery, right? He stopped taking care of the issues. He came five years, after five years, and uh, I believe he, got caught watching child pornography or something. He was divorced. So he had all the problems that these guys had, right? Five years down the line. So that's what we're trying to say, Akhi. When I deal with youngsters, we get youngsters as young as 13 contacting us, but we can't really, you know, legally, we can't really help them, I guess, much, right? Um, but, you know, again, we try to, uh, you know, put stuff on social media, on a YouTube channel, whatever, to educate people. But what I would say is I don't want these youngsters to go through what these people have been through, right? Do you want to go through that, those, that divorce? Do you want to mm. go through losing your kids, getting, being caught watching pornography, losing your career? Uh, there's many brothers who have said they failed years of university uh, because of this problem. It got in the way. You know, do you want to go through the suicidal thoughts, getting into drugs? Right? Because yeah. Basically, there's detrimental effects as well. So when, when, when someone is at the beginning of an addiction, they're probably the most fragile. And, 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 and generally from an Islamic narrative as well, when there's a problem, you dress it when it's there and then, as in a sense where if it's, you're exposed to it and then you should deal with it, you know, at the most urgent time possible, isn't it? As soon as possible. So remember, there's ripple effects to everything. As we were saying, bro, like someone, early stages, I'm not married. Shaitan might come to him and say, yeah, well, you're not really deep in it. Do you understand? You're just maybe starting here. But remember, Shaitan takes us on a journey. You know, he Shaitan's got time. Yeah, he's got time, bro. Very he's got, matter of fact, on that point of time, you know what Allah says? Allah says about the لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ That I would surely sit on your right path and I wait for them. If you're sitting, are you, are you tired, bro? If you're sitting, you're relaxing, you're chilling. If you're standing up, you might feel a bit tired. But when you're sitting, Allah, you, لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ I will sit down on that path. Meaning, I ain't going nowhere. I'm relaxed. I ain't going to feel fatigued. I ain't going to feel anything. I'm in a position where I could be here forever. Point is, is that, yeah, so there's a journey that he takes you on. And you know what? And if we don't address it as soon as possible, as you said, bro, these things, then they affect your studies. I'm as a young child, you're not married. Then you're not married, but they affect your studies. They affect, affect your productivity. They affect you. Now you become lazy. Now you become potato couch. May Allah protect us. Now your parents become upset with you. Yeah, your parents become upset with you. They're probably like, do something with your life. And you're feeling as if like, do uh, you, you understand? You, you, mm -hmm. you're, you're feeling a bit hopeless. So what does that mean? Anxiety, depression. Oh, I'm a useless individual now. What does it lead to, bro? These other thoughts come in. Do you understand? So that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Generally, everyone needs help. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed help. The Sahaba helped him. The Ansar were called the helpers of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The messenger of Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam requires help. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who are we to think that, you know, I don't need help. We all need help, bro. So that's why it's important that if someone's going through it for the early stages, then we say that even if, you know, it's not my tezkiyah, even if it's just your local imam, you know, even if it's just someone that you can open up to, that you know, is sincere and wants the best for you and is not going to, do you understand, give you the wrong advice. Bismillah. And that small little step, Allah sees that goodness in your heart, as you said, and Allah, inshallah, will make a way out for you, bin Allah ta'ala. You know, the brain is a record of the past. That's what they say. So what these youngsters have to realize, every image, right, every video you see, that's going to be stored in, the, in your brain mm. for the rest of your life. Yeah. You will be able to think of that image or that video you've seen 
when you're maybe you know 70 60 years old right so it's very dangerous because you know i was reading an article on uh, uh, cannabis addiction yeah. right and they're saying people who tend to get into uh, you know drug addiction or smoking weed at yeah. early age you know when their brain is developing you know there's that plasticity yeah. aspect of the brain right you're just uh, you know you're going through adolescence and your brain is developing and it's mm. making its pathways and so on so if you now been watching pornography mm. your brain has become hardwired to this Hello, you have pathways and that now built into your brain hardwired yeah, many you hardwired pathways and what happens is there's other studies where people with pornography addiction they have lower stress response mm. right so because they're used to this immediate gratification so tough exam let me go watch pornography uh, problem at work let me go and escape so they're not dealing mm. with life as it comes right so they're not developing emotionally Right, so this this emotional instability, they're not developing emotional intelligence, and it reminds me of one uh, one guy. Right, he said like he's six years old and he's like maybe in his thirties, forties. I said, what do you mean six? He goes, because I stopped growing the day I became a, a sex addict, right? And now I'm, he's sober basically for six years, and he goes emotionally, I'm now six years old, because that's what happens when a person you know goes to drugs, goes to pornography, you stop dealing with life, and you're just your response to life becomes very weak.